In order to stay fully gas safe within your property, you will need to be mindful of these potential dangerous consequences of having poorly maintained, incorrectly installed or faulty gas appliances within your property. You may have read recently or seen it on the news about the 18 people who had died in 10 different incidents between 2008 and 2015 linked to gas cookers. These cookers could produce deadly levels of carbon monoxide which could kill in minutes if you use the cooker or the cooker grill with the door closed. So in this video I'll hopefully explain exactly what you need to know when you're using these cookers so you stay safe. And hopefully we won't lose anybody else to misuse of a cooker. So my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to this video on Are Cookers Really Dangerous? So, like enough waffling now, so let's just get on with it. But I want to just start this video straight from the beginning that there are really no gas appliances sold in the UK which are dangerous straight out of the box. Whether it's a boiler, whether it's a cooker or whether it's a fire, they go through really, really rigorous testing before the appliances are sent out to the UK market or all over the world because they cannot sell a dangerous gas appliance. It becomes a dangerous gas appliance when one, you don't get it installed by a gas safe registered engineer, two, you don't have it serviced regular by a gas safe registered engineer and three misuse of the appliance by the customer. Now before we get cracking let's just talk about the locations where you can and where you can't install a hob or a cooker. Now the first thing is you can't install a cooker or a hob in a bathroom or a shower room. They're flueless appliances. Also, if it's a bed sit, the bed sit has to be greater than 20 metres cubed, the volume of the room. Okay, you can have a single uh, ring or hot plate, but we'll talk about ventilation um, for cookers later on in this video. Um, next thing is combustible material. How far away from combustible material? So if we look at the hob first, we kind of need a, well we need 50 mil at the back here if it's going to combustible material and also from the side of the actual hob we also need 50 mil coming up okay now if we've got cupboards on the side the cupboards need to be 50 mil away from the edge of here and as long as they're 460 mil up that's okay and then we've got 760 from the top of here to the bottom of any combustible cupboard. If you've got an extractor above your hob, then you need to consult the manufacturer's instructions for the actual hob itself. So, 50 mil, 50 mil, 460 for cupboards this side, and 760 directly above. That's for the hob. Let's have a look at a freestanding cooker. Now, if we look at this freestanding high level grill cooker, the measurements are a bit different. So from units to the side here, we need at least 20 mil. Then from units at the side, we need 150 mil. And then anything above the grill, we need 610. So that's 20 from the side. 150 away from cupboards and 610 cupboards need to be above it or combustible material so that's a pretty much a standard but obviously you would check the manufacturer's instructions to see what the manufacturer actually tells you the cooker or the hob requires so that's your installation away from combustible material now, I've got some figures written down here for you. So from the 1st of September 1995 to the 31st of August 2017, 
The UK deaths from unintentional carbon dioxide poisoning from gas appliances was 36%. And from this, 9% of these deaths were caused by cookers, with 3% of them being caused by the grills. The highest cause of death from carbon monoxide poisoning was gas boilers, which was 27%, with 58% of these deaths of CO poisoning happening in the UK homes. So why are people dying of carbon monoxide poisoning in this day and age when we have carbon monoxide detectors? Well, the first thing is, at the moment, as this video is being recorded, it is only mandatory to have carbon monoxide detectors in Scotland. So well done, Scotland. In England and Wales, it's only mandatory to have carbon monoxide uh, detectors when you've got solid fuel appliances, not gas appliances. So the first thing is, guys, always make sure you have a carbon monoxide alarm fitted and fitted correctly okay and maintained correctly because failure to do that could cause death by carbon monoxide poisoning let's first just have a quick look how this carbon monoxide actually affects us so basically what carbon monoxide poisoning is is your body absorbing the carbon monoxide instead of the oxygen into your bloodstream and then starving your brain of oxygen so the body will absorb carbon monoxide five times more easier than it can do oxygen which is a bit weird but there you go so your body will like carbon monoxide a lot better than it likes oxygen so let's have a quick look at how it does affect you and, and, and what levels affects us so we've got percentage of CO, parts per million of CO, percentage of the CO in the bloodstream and symptoms in adults. In children it can be a lot less. So if you do have a budgie and your budgie falls off the perch because that will be the first one to go. Yeah, so uh, that's why miners used to take them down the mine with them. So they would croak it before they did because they're smaller. So I don't mean go and get a budget, get a carbon monoxide alarm. Okay, cruelty to animals. Anyway, let's move on. So if we've got 0.01% CO in the air, or 100 parts per million, we could get 13% into our bloodstream, which will give us a headache in two to three hours. Okay, but if we had 0.02% in the air, or 200 parts per million of CO, which is between 20 and 30% of our bloodstream, then we're going to get this headaches, dizziness, nausea, uh, tiredness after two to three hours. So you can see from this that the actual symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning are a lot like the flu. Uh, and this gets uh, confused with flu symptoms all the time. And that also makes it a lot like this horrible pandemic we're having. So they've all got kind of the same symptoms. So if we've got 0.04% of CO in the air or 400 parts per million, we could have 36% in our bloodstream. Then after this 36, we've got as above, but instead of two to three hours, we've got one to two hours. And if we've got more than three hours, then it could be death. Now, everybody absorbs carbon monoxide a lot differently than each other so these are the kind of the standard okay some will be less than this some will be more so if we've got 0.16 uh, percent of co in the air or 1600 parts per million or 68 percent in our bloodstream it's as above but instead of one to two hours it's 20 minutes if we've got 0.4 or 4,000 ppm or 75% in our bloodstream, we're down to one to two minutes, possible death within 20 minutes. And then if we've got 1.28 or 12,800 or 85 to 90% of our bloodstream, we've got death within one to three minutes. So you can see this carbon monoxide 
is called the silent killer because we can't see it, we can't smell it, we can't taste it. Okay, and this is why it's so important that we have carbon monoxide alarms and that these carbon monoxide alarms are in date. Okay, and they're installed correctly and you change the batteries on a regular basis. Now, some of the carbon monoxide alarms say they have to be changed every five years, so change them. <laughs> Read the manufacturer's instructions and keep the manufacturer's instructions for your CO alarm because, remember, it's not mandatory in England and Wales yet, but it is in Scotland. So if you are an engineer in Scotland, just check up your local area building regulations to see what you need to install. So... Let's get back to cookers. Let me just give you a quick tour around the cooker. Now let's start at the back here. This grill is not just decorative, this is where the products of combustion will come into the room. So a cooker is a class A appliance. That means it's a flueless appliance. That means its products of combustion will come into the room where this is installed. Hopefully the kitchen. So we might need ventilation in different sizes of room, but we'll have a look at that later. But you definitely require an openable window for this cooker or some other direct access to outside like a patio door or a door. Um, if you haven't got a window, that's the ventilation. I'll talk about more about ventilation later. Okay, so we know the top is the um, hob. So in here we've got four rings, some of them do have some more, but most of them have got four. And then we've got the knobs across the top. Now, the knobs are incredibly important because you need to be able to turn the stuff on and off. But the other thing what's important is, it needs to be labelled and the labels need to be clear. Because if they're not, we could get misuse of the cooker, so you might think you've turned the oven on and you've turned the grill on so that's massively important that these are clearly marked also the the uh, taps the gas taps on the front can't be broken or missing if you're trying to use a cooker where the uh, the gas taps are broken or missing why it's dangerous you could leave a gas leak but the other major thing is, why are they broken? Why are they missing? Is it the seals have gone within the grill or the oven? Or the top oven? So that's majorly important as well. Also at the bottom here, it, it allows air in for combustion for the oven. So there's certain clearances we need to make sure we've got. So we don't stop air getting into um, combustion. And one of the things you never ever do, especially in caravans in the winter months, is block up the air vents. It's a massive no-no. You never block an air vent for a cooker because it's a flueless appliance. So if it needs that air for combustion and you go blocking it up, it's gonna fight with you, the customer, to breathe because it needs air for combustion like you need air to breathe okay other things is if you've got signs of scorching around the cooker on combustible materials why are you using the cooker why are you still using the cooker it's dangerous so help yourselves by making sure you don't continue to use the cooker when it's broken, things are missing, you can't read things, it's full of grease and fat, okay, and the safety devices don't work. So it's down to the customer, not engineers, when we go to look at other appliances under our IGM G11, we need to, if we encounter an appliance, we need to check them now, well we've always needed to check them, but don't get on the back of the engineer if an engineer comes out to service your boiler and finds your cooker dangerous. And never ever use your cooker as a space eater. 
So never use it to warm your house up or your caravan. Doesn't matter how desperate you are for warmth, huddle together. Yeah, we can still do that with each of our families, but yeah, don't use it to heat your house or your caravan because you might never wake up. So please help yourselves by looking after your flueless gas appliance because it can give off deadly carbon monoxide. Now, there are several warning signs that the cooker could be giving you to tell you that it actually is giving off this deadly carbon monoxide. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a few things about the cooker that you need to be keeping a mindful eye open for. Now, first thing, the flame on your cooker needs to be a nice blue flame. Okay? If it looks like that, that's giving off deadly carbon monoxide. So, if you've got nice blue flames, that's good. If you've got yellow floppy or orange floppy flames, that means it's dangerous. So, you either need to get your cooker serviced by a gas safe registered engineer, or you need to clean the cooker. So, dangerous. Other telltale signs that your cooker is giving off carbon monoxide poisoning is do you have any black stains on the wall or on the ceiling where the cooker is? That's a big indication because if you've got incomplete combustion you will get sooty deposits coming from the gas. Okay? Also, the byproducts of burning natural gas normally is carbon dioxide and water vapour. If we get incomplete combustion, that's where we get the carbon monoxide from. So if you've got excessive build-up of condensation on your windows, that could also be a telltale sign you've got incomplete combustion. So there are other signs of the, uh, the actual gas hob what could be causing the problem of carbon monoxide poisoning. So while we're at the top of the hob as well, if you have a glass lid, there will be a safety device on there. Let me just turn the gas back on. So your gas engineer, when he's checking the cooker, when he's installing it or when he's servicing, will have to check the safety devices. But that doesn't mean you can't check your safety devices as well. Now, you need to be very, very careful when you do this, okay, and follow this to the letter, really. So, first thing we need to do is, the smallest ring on the front, I'm going to turn it on. Okay, so I've got my smallest ring on the front, okay. I'm now going to slowly drop my glass lid down. And that ring should go out, which it has done. And this cooker actually turns the knobs off as well. Other cookers don't. They, when you lift the lid back up again, then um, they can actually bring the gas back in. So, now I've done that, I can actually light all my rings. But what I always do is the other three bigger rings, just turn them down to minimum, just in case it doesn't go out. And then you can slowly close the lid and it turns off. So you notice how it went up a little bit because <laughs> these knobs turn off. So that stops any heat then shattering the glass. So just be very careful, you should do this to make sure your safety device is still working and I can't stress anymore how careful you need to be when you're testing this. Now if this glass is broken, then get it replaced. If this glass is missing because you've shattered it, then get it replaced. Now if you 
try to override the safety devices for this cooker it makes the cooker immediately dangerous in our unsafe situations procedure so never ever override the safety devices of cookers ever okay because it could end up with death so that's checking the glass lid if you have a glass lid and again my last warning on this be incredibly incredibly careful when you're doing this because you don't want to shatter that glass lid and that is the end of part one on our gas cook is dangerous now if you've liked this video why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below if you've not subscribed to my channel then please subscribe because it helps and don't forget to hit that notification bell because we release videos on Mondays and Wednesdays all I've got left to say is thanks for listening thanks for watching and check out on Wednesday part two and happy holidays and happy Christmas if you're watching this in December cheers guys <laughs>